Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is now out playing in theaters. Now, like many people, I'm a big fan of that original reboot trilogy, kicked off by Wyatt Rupert with Rise, taken over by Matt Reeves with Dawn and War. Excellent films. And like many people, when they announced a fourth entry coming off of this trilogy, I was very skeptical. I was very hesitant because that trilogy is so good. It tells the rise and fall of humanity as well as the rise of of Caesar so incredibly well that when they were going to do a fourth one, I just didn't want them to ruin the legacy of it all. Coming off of Matt Reeves, we got Wes Ball, and right off the bat, let me just say Wes Ball, I now, he has all my attention after this movie because what Wes Ball was able to do with this film, you did not feel at all a quality drop or any type of difference between Wes Ball and Matt Reeves quality when it comes to these movies. This movie is directed not just gorgeously, but so well, everything about this movie looks incredible, which also goes to who you got to shout out next, the visual effects artists on these movies, guys. Just when you think it couldn't get any better, it does, because the apes in this movie, if you thought they looked good in War, if you thought they looked good in Dawn, if you thought they looked good in Rise, they're perfect in this movie. There is not a single imperfection in the visual effects work done in this movie. And there's so much emotion and so so much displayed in the actor's performance in this motion catch, which brings me to the performances in this movie. Everyone across the board is fantastic. Owen T, Kevin Durant, Freya Allen, William H. Macy, Peter Mack, and all of them, they come in here, they take over what Andy Serkis and the rest of the team did in the trilogy, and they make it their own, and they are great. Starting with our new protagonist, Noah. I really liked Noah. Now, Noah is no Caesar. He's not the same type of character as Caesar. He's a young adventurer, ape. He's definitely a little bit more naive, and he's got a long journey to go. But what I liked about the new Noah character is he's so relatable. They make him so sympathetic. This young, naive ape, not much confidence to him, not much maturity to him. And as the movie goes on, you see him get to a place where he is going to have leadership qualities that I think they're going to continue to explore further on in this franchise and I just thought going from Caesar to Noah it was seamlessly it worked perfectly another thing that was seamlessly that worked so well for this movie is the story because for me when you're going from a trilogy to a new set of movies were they going to disassociate it from Caesar? How are they going to do these movies going forward without the story of Caesar? And what they did so brilliantly is that the story here is still about Caesar. It's just about Caesar's legacy. And the brilliant way that they decided to go about that is explore Caesar as not just a legend character, not just a character that's almost like a myth to these apes because this movie picks up so many generations, like hundreds of years later from where we left off in the original trilogy. They explore Caesar as like, a religious figure and if there's one thing that we all can agree on it's religion yeah that's not true for us and that's not true for the apes and what's cool about this movie is they take the words they take the teachings of caesar that we got to experience watching that original trilogy and they bring them into this movie but we have new characters new tribes new clans of apes that are taking the words of caesar and they're using them for their own personal gain some of them take them and they're devote followers of caesar's others take them they twist them they warp them there are so many themes and layers to this movie about the distortion of religion the twisting of religion for personal game to rise up as a leader historical leaders in the past in our world have done this they explore those themes and, and those ideas within this movie and within this world and that was the piece for this movie that i thought made it work so well coming off of that first trilogy it's also super impressive what they've done here with the world building because we get to spend so much time within this world with our characters. We get to see how it has changed since we last left it in the trilogy. And there is an argument to be made here that sometimes the movie moves a little too slow. Sometimes we spend a little bit too much time looking around these environments. But I would disagree with that wholeheartedly because I don't think that this movie is slow. I think this movie is a slow burn but with a purpose because what West Ball is doing in these moments and what I was super invested in with this movie is he is letting us sit in this world and one of the things that i found myself asking while he was immersing us into this world in this moments is 
is this what Caesar would have wanted? And I feel like that's a big question that the movie itself is asking as well. Because we get to see how the humans are now treated, how the apes view the humans, which in some ways is humorous, in other ways is horrific. We get to see how the apes treat each other, how they view the society, and all of it, it just echoes back to everything that Caesar did. And what this movie does is it takes everything, every word that Caesar ever did, and it shows the ramifications that it's had on this new society. And of course, all that comes to a head with our antagonist, Proximus Caesar, played by Kevin Duran, who is probably my favorite antagonist that we've had in these Planet of the Apes movies thus far because he's essentially a false prophet. He's essentially a character who has taken Caesar's words for his own and is using them to manipulate apes to do things for him. And not only is the performance great, is the motion capture phenomenal, but the conflict, the tension, and the drama in this movie really worked for me as well. Because while there are some action sequences in this movie that are highly entertaining, what the movie never loses sight of that the original trilogy did so well is it puts character first. And they're not ape characters, they're characters. And that's what I love so much about these Planet of the Apes movies that really was cemented here, is that when Noah is having a conversation with his mom, it's not an ape talking to his mother ape, it's just a son talking to his mother. Doesn't matter that they're apes. You see past the monkey face and you just see the characters. And here I felt like West Ball was able to bring that across so very well. Because I really loved these characters. Not just Noah, but there's also a character in here that Noah gets paired up with called Raka. He's an orangutan who is a deep, devout follower of Caesar's words. Who also provides some of the most comedic relief of the movie as well. They eventually meet up with a human girl girl played by Freya Allen and she has a intelligence to her that they don't recognize. The script in this movie is really brilliant with how it works with its characters because every motivation is clear for every character and every motivation makes sense for every character and the motivations are motivations that you can get behind for each character. Proximus Caesar is the villain of this movie and you're not rooting for him but you understand him you understand where he's coming from what he's trying to do why he believes what he is doing and what he is preaching is going to be best for apes even if you don't agree with it on the flip side of that the human characters in this movie what they're doing and what they believe in and as a human i, I definitely understood their motivation and understood where they were coming from kind of was rooting for them slightly a little bit but then you've also got our new ape moa and the growth that he goes through trying to reserve the life that he's always known this world that he inhabits you understand where he's coming from you get the motivations of all these characters it makes them more fleshed out it makes them more relatable and it makes them more interesting so with all of these great elements of kingdom of the planet of the apes was there anything i didn't like in this movie a couple things that come to mind is there is a friend dynamic established between Noah and a couple other apes, which those friend apes kind of disappear for a majority of the movie. And I thought that they were actually a pretty strong core friend group that I was getting invested in, especially at the beginning of the movie, that when they were gone, I did kind of feel their absence just a little bit. And the human characters in this movie. Now, I don't want to give this too much of a negative, too much of a gripe in this movie in particular, because this movie is definitely setting up other movies. I mean, heck they want to do nine films from what the writers are talking about and what's great about this movie is you can tell there's a plan there are seeds planted in this movie that this is going somewhere it feels like they have a direction they want to take it and with the human characters in particular I feel there's a plan for the human characters the humans in this movie, however, when you think about coming off of the trilogy where we left off with war, how humanity was basically dying off, when you see the humans in this movie, at least some of them, it can feel a little inconsistent of like, hmm, so how, how did they get there? And there's questions that this movie leaves you with that I'm pretty sure we're going to get answers to throughout the rest of this trilogy and possibly even another trilogy after this. Guys, I loved Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I loved Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes more than I wanted to love it. I think it exceeds... Even some of the stuff that Matt Reeves did in his movies, in Dawn and War, I'm not ready to say it's the best of the bunch. I'm not ready to rank it just yet. What I will say is when I walked out of that auditorium, I walked out stunned. I walked out astounded. I walked out how I 
felt when I walked out of Dune Part 2, which I did not think that was possibly ever going to happen again this year, but it happened with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. If it's not my favorite of the year, it's definitely my second. If you love the trilogy that Matt Reeves and Rupert Wyatt brought us, I think you should definitely check out this continuation. I think they nailed it, and I'm going to give it a strong recommend. Anyway, guys, those are all my thoughts and opinions on Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. What did you guys think of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes? Comment down below. Let me know all your thoughts and opinions. You can check out other videos on this channel right up here if you're interested. And if you're new here and you haven't heard, we have a goal on this channel. We want to hit 4,000 subscribers before the end of the year. If you're new here and you haven't subscribed yet, but you like talking about Planet of the Apes, you like talking about sci-fi movies or just movies in general, consider hitting that subscribe button before you make your way out. We just crossed 2,700 subscribers. Thank you to all of you guys, everyone who subscribed to our channel who's making our channel thrive and strive like it is it's all because of you guys and i thank you so much with all that said guys thank you so much once again for hearing me out and i hope to talk to you guys again real soon